Now, if you look at that and compare it to that of the pen battle two, it'll focus. You can see on the pen, it only extends through about three quarters the width of the tooth. High quality ball bearings still rust just like non high quality ball bearings. This kept it watertight in that area. You tell me why Shimano couldn't do that on this reel, why they couldn't do it on this reel, and why the shield couldn't do it on this reel. And again, 20 years later, and Shimano again had it on their reels that far back. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all, and today we'll be getting up close and personal with half a dozen of today's hottest $100 egg beaters in an attempt to find out which one packs the most value, performance, and versatility, so that way when you, the fishermen, are ready to shell out your hard-earned money, you know you're getting the right tool for the job. Now, with that being said, in the past, I've always tried to pick a clear winner, and in this comparison, I really don't think there is one. Now, rest assured, for those of you that know me by now, you know damn well I'm going to pick a loser. But being that these reels are so dramatically different, for example, the Daiwa BG offers a trout reel sized all the way up to a tuna reel sized, whereas the Socro only offers 15 ounce reels on up. And if you compare something like a Shimano Nasky, it only offers your trout to your inshore size, which is like a 12 ounce or 10 ounce, 5,000 size. And then you have the Tsunami Shield, who's engineered specifically to be fished in harsh environments, and the seals would impact its performance for finesse applications. So we really can't take one reel and say it's best suited for everyone. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a winner for each kind of category. So if you're a kayak guy or a surf fisherman, if you're a boat guy or a freshwater guy, we're gonna pick a reel that is best suited for your needs. And I feel that's kind of the best way to do it. Now, very quickly, I just want to cover what reels we have on the table and where they came from. I think it's best to start off with the Daiwa Fuego LT. Uh, this reel I purchased directly from Daiwa's VIP program and I paid $67 shipped for it. And that being said, I'll leave in the description below what that actually means. If you guys out there feel that I'm not going to be honest and I'm just going to be promoting Daiwa left and right, go ahead, click that dislike button. You can turn this video off. Uh, I want to make it abundantly clear that there is not a single brand on this table that I owe anything to. I'm not here to be the mouthpiece of the tackle industry. I'm here for you guys to help you make more educated purchasing decisions. But if you feel as though I'm going to be biased towards a certain company, uh, in the past I've been called a Shimano fanboy, so <laughs> I guess the joke's on them. Uh, I get Daiwa Direct. But next up we have from Braden, who's a fellow StripersOnline.com member, the Shimano Nasky 5000. Thank you very much, Braden followed by the Tsunami Shield supplied by HK Jonathan, who again is a StripersOnline.com member, a very generous patron, and I'll leave a link down below to where you can contribute to my Patreon account. It really helps support the channel. And he's also another subscriber. Followed up next by the Daiwa BG4000, another reel supplied by the very generous HK Jonathan, and another one of Braden's reels, the Shimano Sokuro 6000. Followed up by the reel I purchased specifically for this review, the Pen Battle 2 4000, which I paid $61 off of Amazon Prime. Now, with that being said, if you're anything like me, you like getting the bad news first. So we are going to start this review off with the biggest turd on the table. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. <laughs> now, I just want to make it perfectly clear, every one of these reels can be fished. They're not going to cost you any fish. You're not going to walk out on the beach and they're just going to vaporize and turn to dust. I mean, where have we been over the last 20 years? Sealed reels really weren't mainstream until very recently, where you have this Spheros, this Saragossa. Used to have the Mitchell Nautil, you had the original Saltiga Z and the Van Stalls, and now you have Z-Basses. It's only now that you're getting sealed reels that are under $200 to $300, and this is a first go-around at a $100 sealed reel in the Tsunami. So, for those of you out there that think that I'm going to just bash the pen all video long, you are sadly mistaken. The biggest turd on the table, in my opinion, is the Shimano Socorro SW, and let's go into detail why. Now, before we go ahead and dive deeper into why I've dubbed the Socorro top turd on the table, let's briefly discuss what it actually does well. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is its main gear made from forged aluminum. It's a composite design, almost identical to that of the Nasky, only the 6000 Socorro is a tad bit larger. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the cookie crumbles. 
everything else that is, <laughs> comes in this reel uh, doesn't hold a candle to the other reels in its price range. So let's dive deeper into that, shall we? Now the first knock against the Silk Row is its $130 retail price. And when you compare it to every single other reel on the table, you pay more and you're getting less. The Pen, the Daiwa BG, the Tsunami, even the Nasky, which is a smaller essential sibling to the Silk Row and the Fuego AT give you more for your money. And when you factor in street price, which you really can't avoid nowadays, uh, it really is the worst value on the table. And we'll go ahead and compare it to its smaller sibling, the Nasky. This reel, it doesn't even have the SW moniker, yet it has more ceiling than the Socorro. The Socorro runs on a very basic locomotion drivetrain, same as pretty much every other reel on the table. Nobody uses it in worm gear. And if you compare its main shaft support, there really isn't any. It relies solely on the two side plates put together to keep that spool shaft and traverse cam in alignment. Now that's not the end of the world. If you look at the pens from yesteryear, the side plate was very thin plastic and it had that, that near identical design where you can see it kind of wanting to twist out and that side plate kept it in place. Every single other reel is supported by some form of steel or metal to keep that in place. Now, I'm not saying, again, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't have it, but $130, most, most expensive reel on the table. Um, on top of that, comparing it again to its smaller brethren, the Nasky, the anti-reverse clutch on the Nasky offers a little bit more protection in the form of their Core Protect, which is that little rubber seal. And if you could see that gap around the perimeter, and I put out a video uh, describing the difference between Core and X Protect, you can see it doesn't really make contact, but it does keep splash and spray from getting up under the rotor into the AR clutch. And you can see it's kind of got like a bluish gray coating. That's a hydrophobic coating to kind of repel water. Uh, it's a nice feature that costs money, yet the Nasky is cheaper. On top of that, if you look at the handle, every single other handle on the table is made from a machined aluminum. This, I don't even know what it's made out of. It's very, very heavy. It feels like it's just like a cast metal. This little bit here is plastic. Yeah, it's kind of a, I don't even want to say a one piece joint because this does kind of wiggle around, but it's a hex shaft connection and every other reel besides the Nasky on the table is a threaded handle to main gear interaction, which is a more solid connection. It's a more premium connection as well. And for the reel that's the most expensive on the table, I feel as though it should include that. Now what I want to show you now is one of my biggest pet peeves. Uh, this here is the Socorro side plate. This is the Nasky side plate. And if there's anything that grinds my gears, it's when companies purposely omit parts that presumably only cost pennies just so it doesn't intrude on some of their pricier products. And if you look here, sorry, I switched hands. This is the Nasky. This is a Socorro. And if you look in here, see those little notches in there? And you see the little notches in here. Now, yes, I know on some Shimano reels they have those notch notches and it's for bushings. But in the case of the Nasky, it's for a little rubber seal. $99 reel versus $130 reel. And they purposely chose to leave those seals out of the reel with the SW label. And the reason why SW is a big deal is pretty much every single SW reel up to this point, up to this reel, had tons of sealing. Saragossa, Sphero, Stella, Twin Power, all of them. Uh, I think the only one now that's uh, that doesn't have sealing that just came out is the Stratic SW, which uses their uh, X-Protect at the pinion. But that's a, a pretty big omission. It's part that probably only cost a couple pennies, and it would have been nice to see that, and it does keep water out. It's an effective seal, especially when you have that hex-threaded handle shaft. Again, that's a hex-threaded handle shaft right there. It would keep the water from getting into that ball bearing and causing damage. And again, it's a saltwater reel. You have to watch out for that kind of stuff. And it's the most expensive reel on the table. So with that being said, let's move along. And we'll get to one of my other pet peeves of the reel. And it borrows a premium feature found in reels such as the Saltiga and Stella SW. Uh, <laughs> spool without a line clip. 
<laughs> I don't know why they left the line clip off. I don't know why they keep line clips off the Saltiga and Stella, but they give you a fancy little neoprene or elastic band that you know you're going to lose and not want to carry with you to keep that line on the spool, not flying down the road when it's in the bed of your truck in a rod holder, or if it's up in a rocket launcher not rigged up. So, yeah. And while we're at the spool area, uh, the drag clicker, Ask anybody who fishes for false albacore or blackfin tuna down in the Gulf. Plastic clickers get shredded quickly. Uh, metal's always better there. Uh, this here is the rotor retaining nut. And we'll go ahead and again compare it to what you'll find in the cheaper Nasky. That's the rotor retaining nut on the Nasky. And that's the rotor retaining cap and the pinion main shaft seal. This rotor retaining nut here has that recession which is identical to that of what you'll find on the Saragossa and Spheros, which is, it's, it's recessed like that to make room for that seal, but instead of using the little plastic cap to hold the seal in place and that little seal that cost pennies, they just use a little metal retaining ring. Again, purposely leaving out something so it doesn't intrude on their pricier Spheros and Saragossa. That's dirty pool, I'm not a fan of that. And I think that pretty much covers all my pet peeves and gripes against the Socorro SW. It just doesn't measure up. Oh, you know what? One last thing before we move on. Uh, and it has to do with the fact they omitted a few cents worth of rubber gaskets. Uh, this silver little plastic trim piece. 90% of the time when you look at other reels, and including all the reels on the table, they have that little plastic trim piece that goes around the base of the reel and you can replace it if it's scratched up oftentimes it covers up some of the spool shaft support uh, bits in this instance i would have much rather preferred uh 50 cents worth of rubber gaskets <laughs> that are found in the nasky than this silly piece of silver trim that they had to have custom made to fit here in the screw and all that kind of jazz how much does this cost versus those little molded rubber bits <laughs> i mean come on really did they really leave that out? And you know what? Now, now I'm curious. Can I take that little rubber seal out of that Nasky and put it in the Socorro? Will it fit? Without, oh, that actually might fit. That actually might fit. That actually might fit. Does it? Does it fit? Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to waterproof the side plate of your Soaker SW, feel free to go on Shimano's website and order a couple of these little side plate seals because they do fit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That 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 is funny. And let's see, how does it interact with the... I don't see any issue there. <laughs> I don't know. Do what you're going to do, guys. Uh, that's why I don't recommend the Socorro. And now, let's move along. I'm willing to bet none of y'all saw that coming. <laughs> Alrighty, now that we've established the Socorro SW is the top tier turd on the table, let me know down below, <laughs> was I being overly critical or too harsh? Uh, was I playing favorites? Uh, did I show you some stuff that you may not have picked up on by reading what's on the side of the box? Uh, either way, let me know down below in the comment section your thoughts. Now, with that being said, let's move along to a reel that I find to be the most interesting on the table and quite possibly the most talked about reel in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go over the Tsunami Shield. Now, for you guys out there who have been following me for a little while now, you may recall a review where I took a $40 Cast King Royal Legend, a $40 Shishimo, and an $80 Favorite Fishing Select Tackles White Bird, who happens to be that company that's partially owned by the Guggen Squad. We tore them all apart, just like you see here, and we established that the reel that cost $80, which was twice as much as their competitors, was actually the bottom of the barrel. It didn't even have features that the other reels at half the price uh, had. And after we played musical parts, we put the reels back together and gave them away. And in order to be involved in the giveaway, you had to let me know whether or not you thought, you thought that favorite fishing select tackles was spelled wrong. And uh, wouldn't you know it, favorite of fishing dropped the select tackles moniker altogether. Now they called it favorite fishing powered by favorite and still call it the white bird. The reason why I bring that up is the Tsunami Shield 
kind of falls in that same category as it's an OEM reel offered by different names like Cat King, not Cast King, but Cat King Ace and Balzer. You can buy this reel. It's similarly priced by the other companies, but that doesn't make it a bad reel. Uh, Tsunami is a company who's been around for a while now, and they tend to stand by their product. So if you're a guy looking to get into a surf fishing combo at under 200 bucks, you can pair this up with one of those pen prevails or any other reasonably priced surf rod. And guys, you can walk out on the beach with a combo that comes in at under 200 bucks and you don't have to baby it. And it is really cool to see a fully sealed reel that retails for under a hundred dollars. It, 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 I've never seen it before. The closest thing that we had in the past was a pen Z and you could pack it with grease and it gets real stiff and it's blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And doesn't handle braid all that great. And you have to use fire line and blah. It, it, it's something that we haven't seen before. And while I haven't really put it through its paces, just your, your standard, you know, resident stripers that are between 23 and 28 inches long, if I'm lucky, um, it held up nice. It's not as refined as the other reels on the table. It's not as silky smooth as a Nasky, which is the smoothest reel on the table. Uh, it's not as refined as a Pen Battle or the Daiwa BG. But what it lacks in refinement, it makes up for in the fact that you can fish this reel in conditions and not worry about it taking a splash, taking a dunk, rolling your kayak, that kind of jazz. And it'll, it'll perform like new longer than the other reels on the table fished in those same situations. Now let's go ahead now and compare some of the things that are pretty obvious right off the bat. Let's take a look at the main gear. And this, in my opinion, really is the weak point of this reel. Uh, it is your run-of-the-mill Chinesium pot metal cast zinc uh, main gear. You have the Nasky again, it's a smaller reel, has that forged aluminum Hagane gear or Hagani gear. I lied, I said it again. This is the main gear from the Fuego LT. It's a cast zinc. The casting is of a, a much better quality. The teeth are larger, even though the diameter of the gear is smaller. And then you have the Pen Battle 2. Again, much better quality casting of the gear. And it, it doesn't seem to be as porous as to what you get out of the the Tsunami Shield, and this is the bigger BG, which is basically the king of the cast zinc main gears. I don't think anybody's made a cast zinc gear <laughs> like, like what you'll find in the BG. It really is uh, leaps and bounds into what we are, we've we been used to seeing in that cast zinc category. It's actually not really a bad thing anymore to be cast zinc when you're uh, the BG. So beyond that, has a brass pinion, instant anti reverse. It has a oddly designed but effective uh, rotor brake, and that is your bail trip. And I tell anybody who's ever concerned about making a hard cast, having that bail prematurely trip, take the reel when you flip that bail over to cast. Before you make that cast, rotate the bail so that it kind of rests up against that trip ramp. So that way, when you do make a hard cast, the handle is not able to gain any momentum, spin around causing the bail to trip prematurely. That can be fixed just by doing what I just described to you. And I didn't have any issues with the Tsunami Shield. It's not a very weak bail trip mechanism. It takes a bit to get it to trip. Uh, a lot of guys were asking questions about that. I can definitely tell you, you shouldn't have any issues with premature bail tripping. Now, other things that happen prematurely, I can't help you with. Just, just throwing that out there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look what really makes this real special, and that is the sealing. Here we have the main shaft, the rotor retaining nut. And if you can visualize for me for a moment, that rotor retaining nut kind of goes on top there to keep this rotor in place. And it has a seal underneath it. This seals the main shaft and keeps water from getting in from the top here. It, it proves to be very effective. If you look at the Shimano Nasky, it also has a main shaft seal, although it's not as tight a seal as what you're going to find in the Tsunami Shield. And if you look at the Daiwa Fuego LT, if we can find it, you can see it has a main shaft seal almost identical to that of the Nasky, only instead of having a cap compressing it, it is a little rubber seal that kind of, I don't know if you can see it lift up right there. 
it's just a lip and it sits on top. It doesn't need anything to keep it in place other than it mold being molded around the rotor retaining nut. You see that? It just sits on that lip. I like how they did that. <laughs> Fewer parts. Now, in addition to that, you have the sign plate seal. And I also want to mention that there are no other reels on the table besides the three I just showed you that have any sealing other than the Pen Battle 2 has sealed ball bearings instead of just metal shielded ball bearings. This is what keeps the water from getting in from the side, combined with the fact that the side plate screws down like how you would see it on a Van Stahl or the new Dio monocoque designs. Uh, unfortunately, they load the sucker up with thread locker and you have to use heat to get it to come undone. And there's so much thread locker throughout the side plates and this top cap here, I couldn't get this off. And I didn't want to take a heat gun to it because if you go too hot, you don't know what you're going to damage beneath it. Uh, I, I tried using the hairdryer and patience <laughs> technique. And, you know, obviously they have specific tools that come with it. You can see this little hokey wrench that it comes with. And even with applying heat for a while and trying to undo this, I couldn't. I didn't want to cause any damage. And you can see here, a little bit of mangling going on here. Uh, I mangled it a little bit. HK Jonathan tried getting it open and he mangled it a little bit. Uh, so you, you do have to uh, <laughs> be careful and use heat. I would have appreciated it a little bit more if they use either less thread locker or none at all. Maybe a screw to keep it locked in place. But that being said, once you're inside the reel and past the side plates, uh, you can see that there's an O-ring here on this side plate right there. So you're not just relying on the threading and the thread locker. You are greeted to, again, sealed ball bearings, just like you'll find in the Pen Battle 2. It's kind of, <laughs> I guess, an insurance policy that the seals fail. I don't know. And... It's, it's actually, speaking of the Pen Battle 2, the internals are very similar. Almost identical as far as how the internals are designed. Same locomotion oscillation system. There's no reel on the table that uses a worm gear oscillation system. And it, I'll see if I can lift that up. You can see the support for that traverse cam is nearly identical to that of the pen. It's actually a little bit larger, but again, it's a, it's a larger bodied reel, so the support should be scaled up accordingly. You know, brass pinion, just like on this. And the ceiling at the top, once you get past that rotor nut, you have the bottom of the rotor that has a seal. And this seal runs on this black rubber seal here. So it's like rubber on rubber. <laughs> so I guess that's okay. Um, in addition to that, It kind of pays a little bit of attention to mitigating friction under load by putting a plastic bushing in there. So that way, when you're retrieving under load, the handle shaft is always going to lean to the direction uh, that the line roller's at, because the line's pulling sideways. And as it pulls sideways, that spool shaft's going to run and rub against this pinion. That little plastic collar will help mitigate some of the friction caused under load. How much of a difference it makes, eh, if you're fishing and, you know, hard charging fish, it might make a difference. I'm not trying to blow smoke up anybody's ass saying that's a, a really worthwhile feature in a reel such as this, but it's something that you'll find uh, in ball bearing form in some of the super spinners like the Saltigas and the Stellas and, the, you know, some of the real high end reels. Now, <laughs> with all that being said... I, the last thing I want to touch on is the spool, carbon fiber drag. Every reel on the table besides the Fuego LT is carbon fiber. The Fuego LT uses sheep hair. And instead of a standard C-clip to keep the drag washers in place, it uses this little cap, which you can only get out by using the spanner wrench function of this little tool. And yes, you have another seal. And you can see when you're putting the spool on and the drag cap down, you can see it really does put quite a bit of pressure on that little plastic plate. So that seal, one of the most effectively designed seals to protect the drag stack. It's, <laughs> it's not bad. And again, the gear, it's not the best gear. I wish it had a higher quality gear. If it did, you'd be in business. Now, one last thing before we go ahead and move on, let's take a look at the line lay. $100 reel, OEM, nothing fancy, 
That's some damn good line lay. Near perfect. No real gaps or anywhere. Fairly straight up and down, no hourglassing. And we're going to grab the Shimano Nasky because it's sitting right next to it. You can see that there is some evidence of hourglassing and some gaps in the top. Now, I didn't have any issues with any wind knots, but if you compare this to something like a pen battle, and I'm not going to pick on the pen battle, um, but all you have to do is go online and research poor pen line lay. This isn't a poor example of, you know, what you see in a lot of pens going all the way up to the torques. See that gap in the top? That gap in the top is what causes wind knots. And I know 90% of wind knots are user, you know, related. You reel the slack line loop on the reel and you cast it off without paying attention. But if you have those gaps at the top, it will pull line on a hard cast off the spool prematurely. And you'll just basically sneeze a blob of braid. And then you'll be picking that out <laughs> and cutting line off. And if you look here, this is the Fuego LT. Fairly good line lay. I had to shim it. It looked ugly before I shimmed it. And getting that shim, uh, <laughs> not even going to go into detail how much of a pain in the ass it was to add a shim because it uses some like invisible o ring on the top of these little washers here. And to get that ball bearing off took about 10 minutes. First of all, problems. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Adiowa BG. Probably the second best on the table. I, you guys tell me which one's better. I'm a stickler for, for, for good line lay. The better the line lay, the better the line management, the less I have to pay attention to reeling slack line loops onto the reel, uh, the less wind knots I'll throw. And I, I've only thrown maybe 10 wind knots in the last 10 years. So I, I, it's, it's something that I'm always paying attention to because the last thing I want to do is spend 20 minutes you know, cutting back, retying, or trying to pick out a knot that flew out. And I don't want to damage my line, because every time you throw a wind knot, it damages your line. Remember that, guys. Now, before we go ahead and move on, let's go ahead and do a quick recap. This is, again, the Tsunami Shield 5000. It comes in at 16.8 ounces. They also offer a 6000, which is about the same size as this, and an 8000, which comes in at around 19 ounces. They also offer two smaller sizes, the smallest being a size 3000, which comes in right at around 10 ounces. And I need to make this abundantly clear. This is not a $99 Van Stahl. This is not a $99 Z-Bass. Uh, the gear train in this reel is far inferior to what you'll find in the gear trains of those higher end super spinners they use stainless steel <laughs> this is that chinese pot metal and if you get a good one it will hold up if you get a bad one it'll wear out quickly uh, there seems to be some good feedback of these reels so far there's some duds and tsunami has 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 warranted those claims and with that being said I can honestly say after fishing this reel, and it almost pains me to say this, it is not a bad reel at all. If you want to jump into the surf game with a reel that you don't have to baby, this may be the best reel on the table. If you're a kayaker, you, you, you really can't ignore what this brings to the table in terms of the ceiling. If you're a boat guy who's got bad aim with a raw water washdown, <laughs> this might be the reel for you. For every other application, if you're a guy that's meticulous about maintaining your gear, if you're not worried about sand and salt water, I would go with pretty much any other reel on the table. Uh, they're much more fluid. They are less tight. They're less stiff on the retrieve. The seals kind of do make this reel a little bit tight. You can see it's not a super free spinner. There is some resistance. It is a little sluggish. It's not bad, but at the same time, it's a little geary. Kind of does remind you of what you get out of install that coffee grinder feel. And with that being said, let's go ahead and touch on the other reels. And we're going to see if we can't pick a winner out of what's left on the table, being reels that aren't necessarily engineered around surviving rugged environments. Just your mainstream freshwater, saltwater boat guys throwing plugs to fish, chunking all that kind of good jazz, not worrying about sand and salt. Now for this portion of the review, I think I'm just going to let the BG and the Battle 2 kind of fight amongst themselves and duke it out and we'll compare them side by side and i promise you i'm not going to play that game where my 4000 is lighter than your 4000 because one has a bigger capacity than the other and they have the same number on the side 
etc. We're not going to go down that road. Uh, each one of these reels, the Battle 2 and the BG, offers sizes that are pretty much directly comparable in size and weight and capacity, give or take an ounce or two on the larger sizes going either way. And with that being said, when you look at these reels side by side internally, they're drastically different. Uh, both of these reels retail at around 100 bucks, with street prices that bring them down into the 60s. Uh, and what you get for your money out of the Daiwa, at least in my opinion, not being a Daiwa VIP shill trying to sell you Daiwa over Shimano and everybody else, you get a lot more. You have ball bearing supported oscillation drive gears, whereas at least on the 4000 size Battle 2, it just runs on bare frame. When you step up to the 5000 size, you do get a bushing there. Uh, but everything else remains the same, the same kind of support. The spool shaft support at the base does get scaled up to a larger size. Whereas on the BG, you actually lose this little support rod. This scales up larger and you gain a larger diameter support shaft here. You still retain that ball bearing. Once you go one size up to the 4500 or the 5000 in the pen, you do get a backup anti-reverse if that's important to you. Uh, the drag performance on both of these reels is perfectly fine. They all use carbon fiber drags or what pen calls are HT100. And when it comes to their clutches, whether or not you feel that the on-off switch is a weakness, I generally do, but when you look at how it's kind of isolated, so if you have the two side plates going together, even if water gets in there, it shouldn't get past it. Uh, is there the risk of it getting up into here? Not in my reels. In a, in a reel that's out of the box, maybe. I have seen a little bit of grease in this area too, so water should not be an issue getting from here up into there. And even if you don't like opening your reels, you can just put a little bit of grease in there. Uh, would I have liked to see no anti-reverse clutch on and off switch? Yeah, no doubt about that. But when it comes to comparing the clutches themselves, and again, we're not going to play that. My 4000 is bigger than your 4000 game. But the Pen Battle 2 clutch on the left uses plastic springs, and the clutch on the Daiwa uses metal. Whether that's a big deal, their load carrying capacity, their torque capacity should be fairly similar. I, I don't think you're going to blow out an AR clutch uh, because one has plastic versus metal. Because how much pressure is that really going to take? 25, 35, 45 pounds? Are you really going to be fishing 30 pounds of drag on a $99 reel? <laughs> I mean, be honest. Uh, if you're sharking with it and you want an entry-level shark spinner, if you if you want a kind of an entry-level tuna reel, then I can kind of see that, but it should hold up. And again, these clutches get bigger as you go up on both of them. So I don't want to play, you know, metal versus plastic because I've never had one of these fail on me in this design, and I've never had one of these fail on me. Uh, so it's kind of a wash, even though the metals in here uh, makes me feel a little bit warmer and fuzzier. Now for <laughs> the most obvious difference between the two reels, and again, we're not playing the My 4000s bigger than yours, but this can be said about every reel throughout the series. That's the Daiwa gear on the left and the pen gear on the right, both cast zinc. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. And if you compare the... Daiwa gear from the 2500 sized Fuego LT. I put out a video uh, comparing the uh, Pen Battle 2 4000 to the 2500 Daiwa. The 2500 Daiwa is significantly larger. Maybe not significantly, but it's larger. Now what I'm going to show you guys here is very rarely talked about, and I'm not pretending to be an engineer, but it kind of makes sense to me. If you look at this area of the gear tooth. You see that silver line? It might show up as black, where it's kind of polished. That's a result of each gear tooth interacting with the tooth on the pinion. Now, if you look at that and compare it to that of the pen battle two, if it'll focus, you can see on the pen, it only extends through about three quarters of the width of the tooth. Whereas on the Daiwa, It's the full length. Now, again, I'm not an engineer, but I would assume having more of a mesh, more material meshing and working with you would in turn be a stronger mesh. You can put more pressure on it. 
Now, regardless of the fact that the teeth are different sizes, with the diode being a little bit larger than the pen, I would still think that a larger contact patch would translate into a longer wearing, stronger gear. Kind of like if you tried to run a quarter mile on Prius tires, I guess is the best way to put it. So again, I'm not an engineer, but it makes sense in my brain, something to consider. And again, as you go up in size, the gears do get larger, but the, the relation kind of stays the same. The Daiwa gear is in fact bigger than what you get out of the Battle II on all fronts, diameter, gear tooth, and mating surface. So just throwing that out there, something to consider, and another reason why I think the Daiwa does it a little bit better uh, than the Battle II. Now since we compared the main gears, let's now go ahead and compare the pinions, and we'll also go into how they're supported. Uh, if you look at the one on the top, that's the pen, and the one on the bottom is the BG, and they do it a little bit differently. Pen supports it above where the gear teeth mesh, the Daiwa supports it kind of above and below. And I questioned this in the Slammer 3, mainly because the base of the pinion was chewing through the frame. And I got a reply from one of the engineers over at Penn, and he said it's very difficult to support the pinion in three places. It's tough to get the bores all centered. And that makes perfect sense to me. That's a perfectly acceptable uh, response, and I have no issues with that at all. My issue, however, is under a heavy load, it's designed to impact this portion inside the frame here, if I can get that in focus. Whereas when you compare it to how Daiwa and Shimano do it, that's where they put a ball bearing. So at no point under any amount of load is there the opportunity for any portion of the pinion to ever impact anything without uh, <laughs> the aid of something to mitigate friction. And whether or not you ever get to that point, uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but they seem to do this uh, on all their reels until you get up into the bigger, more expensive reels. Uh, when you go up to the 8,000 size battle, it stays the same. Until you get up into, I believe, the top tier on the Torx, say that five times fast, and the Slammer, do you ever get any bushing under the pinion? Now comparing the two from the top down, it gets a little interesting. If you see the pen on the left, it's supported by that sealed ball bearing. On the right, you have the top section exposed, which is the AR clutch sleeve and the AR clutch bearing. Now, what makes this interesting is when you put the rotor in place and bolt it down, you have a fairly effective seal because that little gap in the pinion there is taken up by the base of the rotor. So as far as the sealing is concerned, pen wins out hands down over the Daiwa. And again, it's not fully sealed. You're not gonna be sticking a hose up under there and keeping water out of the air clutch. But I have seen air clutches on the Daiwa BG fail because they rust out. And if water gets down in here, it can get right down into this bearing up top here. So the pen is protected better from the top down. Additionally, they include a bushing here to mitigate friction on the spool shaft when you're retrieving under load, and we went over that with the Tsunami Shield. So in, in terms of their clutch support and pinion support and their designs, it, it kind of is a wash, and pen almost wins out because I don't know if we're gonna be putting tons and tons and tons of pressure <laughs> that you'll see this pinion base impacting the frame itself. So you tell me guys, I'm gonna give that one to the pen. Uh, and at the same time though, the die was larger. It has a larger main gear, a larger pinion to match, and that scales up in size, even though these reels aren't really the identical size. So the comparison may be a little bit off. So with that being said, let's move along real quick to the drags. And I apologize, I'm going to use some marketing jargon, but we're going to dispel that really quickly. Here we have the Daiwa ATD dragged carbon fiber drag spool, and we have the HT100 drag spool. And yes, their carbon fiber drags are both smooth. And I have not noticed uh, <laughs> the Daiwa having that little bit of slip because it has ATD in it. I, I haven't noticed that on my Soltiga at all. Um, it's to me performing no different than a uh, carbon fiber drag stack on any reel that I've ever used in the past. And that's what we got to say about that. 
Now when you compare the spool shafts between the two, this is the pen and this is the Daiwa. Pen has this big bolstered brass piece, which does translate into some extra support when under load. When you compare it to the dia, where it just uses that raw stainless, uh, is one stronger than the other? They basically have the same internal shaft diameters down through here. I'll give the edge to the pen, and they do both have uh, ball bearings that support the spool, so that way when there is a heavy load, and the spool wants to kind of lean one way like this towards the line roller, uh, that ball bearing is gonna keep it centered. And what I found funny about the Battle II, if you compare this to what you saw in Alan Hawk's review of the Clash, he critiqued the Clash's bearing as kind of binding up against the uh, spool shim. And on this, the cheaper and older model, uh, it is actually lifted off properly. Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Uh, the same thing can be said about the Daiwa. It doesn't get bound up against that spool shim. Next up, let's take a look at the two rotors. You have the plastic rotor of the BG on the left and the cast aluminum rotor of the Battle II on the right. Um, generally speaking, I'm a bigger fan of metal, but with the way Daiwa does the rotors, this arch that everybody always talks about and reviews, uh, it does uh, make for a very rigid rotor and it takes some weight out. So when you start turning the handle, you don't get that heaviness in the beginning. Uh, and again, this rotor is smaller, this rotor is larger. They're pretty much identical in weight, just to give you an idea. And I'll take weight savings on the output side of the gear train uh, any day of the week, as long as it still remains rigid. And if you look at the really high-end reels, uh, their Saltiga lineup, uh, specifically, they use that long strand carbon fiber Zion crap, and it holds up to some serious pressure. And this reel, while it's not that same material, it's plenty strong, as are the rotors on the Battle II. So, you know, throw a dart, but I'm leaning towards the lighter one in this instance. In terms of their bail trip mechanisms, I haven't had any issue with premature bail trip on the pens or the Daiwas, but again, I rotate the bail so it runs up against that trip ramp so the handle can't gain any momentum and prematurely trip that bail. So we're not gonna take one over the other. To me, they're both equal, although the pen has a nice little click. A lot of people like that clicky uh, open lock, whereas the, the Daiwa is more or less sounding like you're having a baseball catch and you're popping that baseball into the mitt. And you know, six of one, half a dozen the other. It's on you guys. Now, last but not least, the handles. I feel as though the Daiwa BG wins out. It is pretty much as solid as you're gonna get. There is no forcing you to tighten it up enough to get these two pieces to kind of form one. Uh, it is one piece uh, solid. There's no joint, there's no flex to it. Uh, Daiwa wins out, hands down. Uh, I also like the handle knobs that you'll find on the BG over the Battle II. And that was not always the case. When Daiwa had the similarly sized or shaped knob, when they had that crappy plastic, do you guys remember that? I just remember the Saltiga Surf that was 400 bucks had like a Fisher Price hollow feeling plastic handle. It was the biggest piece of, on the market. Uh, it's nice to see that they have kind of that uh, Septon-like Shimano rubber. And yeah, it's not that egg shape either. I'm not the biggest fan of the knobs found on the Saragossas and on up. And yeah, I'll give the, the nod to the Daiwa. And you can remove this, the knobs are riveted on, and you can oil from the inside out. Uh, if you wanna swap out the knobs to something different, you have to drill out this, just to give you guys a heads up. And I think that about covers it. The Daiwa ball bearings, they, yes, I did find they are those Minibia uh, bearings. <laughs> when I had it apart in that maintenance uh, tutorial, I never saw the labeling on it, so I couldn't really confirm it. I wasn't sure if Daiwa switch factories and just didn't label it. But yes, they are Minibia bearings, which are the same that can be found in the higher end reels that Daiwa and some of Shimano reels offer. Uh, and I, I'm just going by what Alan Hawk on, uh, said on that. I haven't seen them or paid close enough attention when I've had my Saltigas and stills apart to see where the bearings are from. Um, and that being said, I, I honestly do feel overall, including intangibles, you know, how it fishes, the little things. I like the BG over the battle. 
I, it just, it, it's a better fishing reel. Uh, it lays line better. I'm not going to get into and in, in full on heat on the <laughs> pen battle too, but I have seen so many people standing next to me who I know are good fishermen throw a wind knot after wind knot after wind knot until the line gets deeper within the spool to the point where I would never imagine uh, under spooling a reel as much as they're fishing a reel just to avoid wind knots and then they switch to a Daiwa or a Shimano and they never have that same problem. It, it really comes down to the line management and the pen battle just doesn't do it as well as the Daiwa. And again, I'm not the biggest fan of the way Daiwa does it. I like the way Shimano does it. As a matter of fact, my biggest gripe is the Saltiga's drag knob and that little groove in the center of it when you man I manually close my bail, but the springiness of the bail is enough to throw a loop on top of that spool and it'll catch right in that groove. It, uh, it drives me nuts. I wish they had the same drag knob on the BG as they do on the Saltiga for that reason alone. And I'll tell you what, it happens a lot. It just catches that silly drag knob gap. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to have that big three inch loop over the knob. But that's a different reel and a different gripe altogether. Uh, so that being said, I will pick the Daiwa BG over the battle, uh, pretty much in any size range. I fished the smaller BGs, uh, the 3500 and the 1500. I've fished the 5000 uh, pen battles. I never fished the really big ones. And my buddy had a battle, uh, I think it was a 1000 or 1500 that I fished as well. And it's just one of those things where everything about the BG I liked better in hand. Now, with all that being said, Let's go ahead and take a look at the little pipsqueaks on the table and see if we can't cover these briefly. And a lot of guys out there love the Naskis, and I will tell you, uh, in all honesty, the Nasky is the smoothest, buttery, smooth feeling reel on the table. It feels the most refined, even though it has that silly hex handle and doesn't even offer a ball bearing supported oscillation gear. Uh, so that kind of tells you, are ball bearings always needed? Nyeh. But in the long term, you have a cast zinc reel running on plastic frame, and that will wear over time. Uh, so how long is that like new buttery feeling going to last? I don't know. Uh, that's, that's up to you guys and how often you guys fish. It has some nice sealing, and when you compare it to the Fuego LT, We'll get up close and personal here. The Fuego LT has sizes comparable to those in the Nasky lineup. And again, I haven't fished this reel enough to say how good it is. Uh, I'll put up a clip of Elias V torturing his on some tarpon and check out his channel. He beat the snot out of this reel. And uh, to full disclosure, uh, Elias's reel locked up on him. He was able to free it up by adding some grease and oil. He said he didn't take it apart. So usually that means you may have some salt water that got in here, left some crustiness down in there when it dried. And anytime there's resistance on the output side, meaning after you turn the handle outside into the pinion realm on the output end, uh, you can have more resistance, it can lock up easier. So I suspect that he may have had some salt buildup inside here, so maybe the seal didn't hold up. But that's just uh, speculation, I have no idea. But it is running again. He said he hasn't had an issue since. And you know, aside from that, a buddy of mine cooking and fishing also had an issue with a ballistic LT, which I also have. Uh, and after a day of lake trout fishing, pulling up a couple acres, it got geary on him, so he exchanged it. The one he has now is perfectly fine. So those are the only people that I know that are fishing these LTs. I've put more time on my uh, Tatula LT than I have the Ballistic, the Exiler, and this reel here. So I really can't comment other than speculate based on the design. And to me, it looks like it's a, I guess the best way to put it, a plastic framed saltist. Uh, Daiwa claims that this plastic frame material is similar to that of the old CI4 uh, from Shimano, not the CI4 Plus, which is on par with Zion. And I can actually see some of the carbon strands in the frame material. And that 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 is different than what you see on these graphite framed reels in the Nasky line. Now, that doesn't mean it's as rigid as what you get out of a Ballistic or a Tatula LT. There is some flex under load, but it's not that bad. I will say the Akuma Epixer 
uh, was more rigid, but it weighed more, just to give you guys in a comparison. Whereas the smaller Naskis, you do get a little bit more flex than what you do get out of the Fuego. So if that's important to you and you want a little bit better rigidity versus a little bit better gear material, again, the forged aluminum gear, uh, you can't deny that is the better of the two materials. Uh, that's on you guys. But at the same time, even though you're sacrificing the gear material, you're making up for it in the fact that the gear teeth are larger. And we went over the whole contact patch. And Shimano, if you can see here, this anodized coating may not have worn in yet. Um, doesn't really show up on camera. Hang on a second. I don't know if it's going to show up, but the gear mesh patch is equal to that of the Daiwa. So gear teeth versus gear quality material, that's on you guys. I think the, the Nasky does a little bit better, but at the same time, I'll take this handle design. This is me speaking anyway. You guys can make up your own mind here. Uh, I don't like this crap here. I, I, I've, I just don't like it. And when you look at a Stratic from 2001 that retailed for 105 bucks and had a worm gear oscillation, uh, it had this, and the Stratic was plastic and metal, whereas this is all plastic in the Nasky. So how far have we really come? <laughs> now comparing the drags between the two, the Fuego comes in with felt while the Nasky uses carbon fiber. Now for freshwater sized reels in this range, the 2500, the 2000, the 1000, that kind of stuff, felt's fine. Uh, my, my Shimano Stella has a felt drag stack. When it comes to salt water, when I'm putting higher pressure against fish that pull harder and faster, I want carbon fiber. If I'm fishing for steelhead or some bigger trout, I kind of may want to lean towards carbon fiber, especially if you go into the Salmon River and you're dealing with king salmon and they're just smoking 30 yards at a clip. Uh, he may want carbon fiber because felt will uh, flatten out and get sticky uh, relatively quickly, or at least in my ex experience anyway. Let's take a quick look at the anti-reverse clutches. On the right you have the core protected super stopper on the Nasky. On the left you have the robust uh, standard off the shelf anti-reverse clutch. Uh, I've always been a fan of the Shimano super stopper. My only gripe being that if any oil gets in there at all, generally speaking, especially in cold weather, uh, it will fail, meaning the rotor will rotate backwards. Uh, the Daiwa's, you can actually get a little bit of oil in there. So, throwing that out there to you guys, uh, I'm going to call it a wash. Uh, Shimano's are strong. They can handle a, a fairly heavy load, and they're serviceable, or more serviceable than what you get out of these off-the-shelf parts. So, I'm kind of leaning nasty on that, but I've had good luck with the Daiwa clutches as well. And if you look here, this is the Mag Seal. This is the anti-reverse clutch sleeve, which sits right in here like so. And from the top down, that is a waterproof barrier. Any way you slice it, water's not getting through there uh, unless it emulsifies with that ferrofluid over a long period of time and it deteriorates, crumbles up, and flies away. <laughs> I don't know how long that's going to take, but you have to really expose this stuff to a lot of harsh solvents and oils that you shouldn't be getting up in there anyway for that to happen. Uh, I am a big fan of Daiwa's Mag Seal. And one thing I will, will note, uh, when I took apart this reel, I noticed when I lifted the rotor off, the air clutch sleeve kind of got hung up on this uh, protrusion here. You can see it's recessed in the top of the air clutch sleeve, and it pulled it out, getting mag fluid all over the place. So me being somebody who's very familiar with how to work on mag sealed reels, uh, I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen, and I did spay, I did spay, and I did pay special attention to avoid that, and it still occurred. So, so yeah, if uh, if you're the kind of guy that likes surfacing your own gear, uh, you got to take points off for that because not everybody has uh, the ferro fluid. I do because I found a company that makes it, and I reached out to them, had a little Q and A session, and they recommended and gave me some free samples. Some of the stuff is 30 bucks a milliliter, so uh, <laughs> the free samples went a long way. So I appreciate them for, uh, for doing that. And <laughs> with that being said, 
Uh, where do we go now? I mean, you're comparing, uh, you know, two reels that are very similar. They're one's fancy plastic, one's standard plastic. I, you know, I don't want to even critique one versus the other, especially since we don't know how well the Fuego is going to hold up over time because nobody really has had it on the water long enough. Uh, both fish relatively well. Uh, very light reels, both of them. Both use bushings and the line rollers. Uh, the, you know, rotor on the Fuego uses the Daiwa arches. And if you look at what you have out of the Nasky, Shimano has those arches as well. Now, one thing I'll also add, pick your poison, what kind of knobs do you like? I know the Nasky uses different style knobs for the smaller reels, but I can definitely say these new low profile knobs that are on all the Daiwa reels, I dig them. I, I definitely like them. Uh, I'm not a fan of T-knobs, so that's me. Whether you feel the same, that's entirely up to you. Now let's take a quick look at how they seal up the side plates. Now if you remember about an hour ago, we took the Socorro and turned it into the Nasky side plate using this little rubber seal. Now let's take a closer look at what Daiwa does with the Fuego LT. This little rubber boot here, it from the outside in, makes it a little bit trickier for water to get to the side plate because if you look, water has to get around this gap here to get to this point, which is pretty clever and it kind of follows what Shimano does with their X shield, sorry, X protect, which creates a labyrinth uh, to prevent water from having an easy route to get to the, the fancy bits. Now, this here, once this little rubber boot goes up over that side plate lip, it does impact the axle on the main gear, preventing water from getting past it into this side plate ball bearing. On the other side of the reel, depending on what handle you're reeling, you have one of these little caps here that screw down to keep the water out. So when you compare it to the Nasky, water has pretty much free reign to get up inside here to that seal. And it's relying solely on the seal to keep the water out. So a six and one half a dozen the other, it's a little bit more cleverly designed on the Daiwa, but on both sides of the reel, you're relying on that little rubber seal because there's no cap to seal off the opposite handle side plate because you have this. So you tell me, uh, all day, every day, I'll take less rubber seals to rely on for 100 Alex <laughs> for, for my reels and how I want them waterproofed. And again, we're talking freshwater reels for the most part. Uh, you can use these for salt water, uh, you know, inshore stuff. But I, I, I kind of like how the Fuego does it better than the Nasky. And additionally, you have, again, the ball bearing support over the frame support. You have two metal rods, which are better than one. And you have a lip seal, which is identical to how uh, the Nasky does it at the rotor. Instead of having a little plastic tab that presses down, it kind of forms over that lip, just like we saw on the side plate. So you tell me, I'm going to let you guys pick on your own on that one. Uh, I kind of dig the, the Fuego over the Nasky because it's the fancier plastic. I, I usually don't like red, but I don't mind the looks on this. And it's not like a blood red, it's almost like a lipstick red. <laughs> and it kind of looks, it kind of looks pretty cool. Because uh, it's like a gunmetal blackish gray. And I think at this point, uh, we can kind of compare these two reels to the other guys like the BG and the Battle 2 in those sizes. And if you don't need the seals, the BG is a Fuego with a metal frame that's more rigid. And even though it doesn't have the seals, uh, it's going to be a more solid reel. So if you're a freshwater guy and you need that tank of a reel, best reel on the table, hands down, BG. Again, if you don't need seals. Uh, I'll take that over the Fuego. If you want something that may be a little bit lighter, hasn't really uh, been tried and true, offers a little bit of ceiling, and you're a gambling man, uh, gotta go Fuego. But again, 
these all might turn out to be pieces of junk. They all might just break. You know, look at this little skinny handle right here. Who knows? Maybe six out of ten snap in two. I don't know. You know, this is all speculation. That reel's too new. Um, anytime I see this style handle, urgh, <laughs> I won't buy it. Plain and simple. Uh, that's me. Uh, so if it's a Shimano that has it, if it's a Daiwa that has it, I'm not buying it. Uh, you will never see me ever again in my entire life buy a hex-handled shaft reel. Not today, not ever. So that really sways my, uh, my, my opinion on what reel uh, I would buy. And, you know, when you compare the Battle 2 to the other reels on the table, part of what gets me going towards the BG and the Fuego is the size of the cast zinc gear. And you look at the Shimano, has a bigger gear than what you have in the Battle 2, even though it is a smaller reel and it has a better gear material. So if you want to compare the Nasky to the Battle, go Nasky. You know, Zinc versus this, even though the Nasky has that. I'll take this and that over this. And where the other handle? You get the point in the handle. So, yeah, that that's that's pretty much uh, as far down that rabbit hole as I want to go. Even though the pen has you know, a couple seal ball bearings, I'm I'm not taking that as a bonus over what you'll get out of the Nasky. And I'm completely <laughs> putting parts in the wrong pile all over the place now. <laughs> Now, on that note, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up with the reels fully reassembled. And I want to touch on briefly a couple things I brought up that were pain points. Uh, if you recall, I have kind of harped on the hex handle shaft uh, being a, a big pet peeve of mine, especially in 2018. The reason being, if we travel back in time 20 years, you have this reel here. This is a Daiwa Emblem X and Shimano's Stratix, the Magnesium Stratix and the regular Stratix of that time had the same design. You see this little cap here on the side? This is actually a hex handle, but it had a sealed cap and it used an actual screw. This kept it watertight in that area. You tell me why Shimano couldn't do that on this reel. Why they couldn't do it on this reel and why the shield couldn't do it on this reel and again 20 years later and Shimano again had it on their reels that far back that's 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 kind of half-assed to me and it, it, it's worth pointing out because it's a design that I guess they forgot about maybe somebody has a patent on it I don't know but it's something that is a, a big deal and additionally, I want to compare real quick the Pen Battle 2 to the Daiwa BG. And I kept on saying seals and seals and seals and seal bearings versus not non-sealed. And I even brought up the Minibia bearings that Alan Hawk pointed out were used on some of the higher-end reels. And I want to bring this up because I think it's important. High-quality ball bearings still rust just like non-high-quality ball bearings, although they're a little bit smoother uh, when they're running right. Now this is the BG4000, it's seen light use over the course of a season, and I hope my mic picks this up, but you hear that raspiness? That's the ball bearing that sits on top of the pinion. The Battle 2's bearing is sealed, and it, it's, it's more protected than what you're going to get in the, the BG. So, and I, and I think it deserves to be brought up uh, a little bit separately now that the reels fully reassembled, it was tough to kind of explain why certain things are more important than others and why I was giving the, the bonus points to the battle too when we were in that area of the reel from the top down. This is why. Now this ball bearing, if you want to order it direct from Daiwa, is 20 bucks, and it's, just, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, if you don't open up that bearing, fill it with grease or you know a, a mixture of crows and X and grease to thin it, uh, you'll, you'll have that problem down the road if salt water gets down in there. Uh, you're better off maybe going with like a, a $10 you know, sealed hybrid ceramic and maybe popping a little rubber seal off and putting some grease or oil in there, and it'll stay put a little bit better than just a regular metal shielded bearing, and it'll last longer. And uh, I also want to bring up something that's kind of funny. On the base of the Pen Battle 2, you see two holes, and we'll grab the little rash guard 
Uh, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a drain hole. I think. I, I thought that was kind of kind of funny. <laughs> And on that note, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you who have made it this far. And I just want to take a second and let you guys know I'm thankful for every second of every minute you guys spend here. Without you, I wouldn't exist here on the YouTubes. I just want to let you guys know I kind of tried to do this a little bit differently from what you see online. I know there is a lot of stuff to cover. And I did my best not to just go over stuff that you see on the side of the box. You guys finding me on YouTube kind of already lets me know that you're professional Googlers already. And uh, <laughs> you can find the inches per turn, the gear ratios, the you know pounds of drag, and the weights and all these reels. Uh, I kind of went into that on the shield because it's kind of a, an interesting reel that's kind of different and new. Uh, but all the other reels are pretty much uh, iterations of things that we've seen in the past for years already. And with that being said, if you don't mind and you are able to, check out my Patreon. Make a contribution to help my channel continue to go and grow. Uh, so check that out. I'll leave a link down below. And at the end, you'll see an orange P pop up on the screen. That's where you can contribute directly financially. And for guys out there that aren't able to contribute directly out of their wallets, or you just don't trust uh, something called Patreon, <laughs> with your credit card number. Uh, I do have affiliate links down below, so if you're an Amazon shopper or an eBay shopper, uh, any purchases made through those links below, whether it be related to what you're clicking on or not, uh, will pay me between 3 and 6% in terms of a finder's fee. So if you click on a link that has a Daiwa BG in front of it and you go buy a pair of shoes, I get, I think it's 6% of the, whatever you buy uh, after clicking that link on Amazon. And same thing can be said about eBay. So those are different ways you can support me. And let me know down below, uh, what did you guys think? What are your experiences uh, with the reels that you've used in this review? Uh, I, I've, I've kind of tried my best to point out the bad and bring out the good, kind of giving you guys a heads up as to what you can expect. Uh, and, and it's tough. Some of these reels are too new to really, you know, give an accurate depiction of how long they're going to last in terms of durability. And I didn't want to speculate too much. I know we did a little bit, and I apologize for that. Uh, there are just a lot of things in that new Fuego that look like what you find in the BG. So it's kind of a, it's almost fair. And with that being said, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. And I just want to say one last time, thank you very much tight lines, and I will see you guys soon.